Good morning, and how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good, and you? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. By grace, I'm doing well. Are uh, you playing game? I can see you having fun. Yeah. Uh, which teams are you uh, playing with, anyway? I am playing with Liverpool against Manchester United. So which of the teams are you? I'm with a league champion, the Champions League winners. <laughs> uh, Liverpool? Yeah. Uh, why are you a fan of Liverpool? In the new in the new FIFA twenty they are very they are very strong side to contend with and then they are having a lot of um materials and then a lot of things to that you can learn about from them also. So Okay, so but do you support them? No, my favorite team is Barcelona. For oh, Barcelona. Why Barcelona? Um I think I um I came from an an ab that's like really love to play their tiki tata game and then like the supportive system game because I came all the way from a club like my mother club or my parent club is a club that's like I play the scientific football so I think I have that root from there and then also like a couple of funny players that they have there also so okay okay so let's start with the interview now Take us through how your journey began as a footballer. I know you've played for Liberty Professionals and the likes. How did it all start for you? Yeah. Well, I I started from um, a local club based in um, Asantia Chim Konongo. Um, okay. It was called Mezals. Like that was um, the former team of Sule Muntari and then um, Rabiu Mohamed. So one, one man came there to like be the owner of the team so he saw me and then decided that he wanted to help me a lot he's called uh, mr abdul mumin mahama so um there was um, a football exchange like program in germany so he took me there so i was in germany for like eight months and then after like i came back i went straight to liberty professionals and then um i was there for quite a while and then I, I moved a little bit to Mighty Jets. And then I played there for like six months. And then I came back to Liberty Professional. So I was just with their second side team. And then I was just there. So one time we were having training. And then um, the then um, vice president of the FA, um, George Freie, he was um, one of our shareholders of the club. So he came to watch um, the second side as we were training and then he said who is this guy he's a very good player so i should come to the first team to train with them so i went to the first team to train with them and then i think that weekend um the second team was having a game with the national that 17 and that time it was um Paco Fabian who was like the coach so we went to play against them so i just played like 10 minutes because they were having the team already and then i just came so I just played just like 10 minutes and then immediately after the game, Paco Si con contacted the coach that I should come back. During that time, I was already 18 because I, my passport was already 18 because that was my age. So mm -hmm. after that, um, um, I couldn't join the national under 17. So okay. um, coach Salastete was in the under 20 at then. So we we again played another game with the national under 20 and he said this guy is a really good player so he called me into the national under 20. even as at that moment i haven't even tasted premiership before i haven't even tasted the premier league i was just a new b who just came in i okay. wasn't like registered yet and then everything so i joined the national under 20 and then god being so good i was part of the team that went to the african cup of nations in Senegal. Okay. And then during that time when I was at the national camp, I had a contract to go to uh, the Czech Republic. So I moved from the national camp and then went to the Czech Republic to finalize my contract and then everything. So the team was in Turkey, so I had to join them in Turkey. And then we had one week prior to final selection. So basically that is how the journey started. And then I just did um, three Premier League games. One okay, against just three. Um, Interallies. 
and then against Hustle Folk and then against Wow Stars. So basically, like that was my journey. Like, mm. Mm. In how the was the game against just, Folk? just three games in the Premiership, and then I just boom, I just came to Europe, and then I've been in Europe since. Okay, okay. Ordinarily, parents would say, I want my son to be a doctor, a journalist, or whatsoever. Were your parents in support of you being a footballer? At first, my, like, um, I've, I've stayed with my mom for, like, my entire life because I didn't know, actually know my dad. And then my dad is passed now, so I didn't actually know my dad. So I've stayed with my mom all my entire life. And then I have just three sisters. And then I am the last one. So and then all of them have their yeah, uni like university like degrees. So like my mom my mom herself was a lecturer also. So it's like our family is like educational background. Mm. So my mom was actually pushing me to go to school and then I was actually going to school and then I was very good at school because I was all this while like during this journey I was still going to school and then everything. So Mr. Ab Abdul Mahama went to my mom and then told my mom that he should give him one year. He's going to make me a star. He's going to make me like a professional football player. And then okay. if that one year, if mm. he's not able to make me what he promised, then he's going to take care of my education and then everything. So he basically adopted me and then like that was how it all came. So Okay, so I'm Ruben. From Omi TV, my colleague here is Derek Asai. He also has a question for you. So, Derek. Well, I, I um, as you okay. you're speaking well, uh, it means that you've taken education serious. How how far did you go, um, on the education ladder, and what has that done to to the game, for you? Well, um. I went a little bit far because I was um, in my first year in the training college. So I basically went to the training college. So I actually have a lot of experiences when it comes to like my intellectual capabilities. And then the reason why I would say that it has helped me a lot is living in Europe is a different dimension altogether. And then in as much as we play football, you can have the 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 skill and then everything but if you don't have like the sense and then the idea to like practice what you what you know is really going to get complicated for you so basically education combined with football really helps a lot mm. that is well, uh, only what i can say about well well uh, you have a lot of friends who play the game uh, what advice do you give to those, those guys uh, with regards to combining uh, the game and, and education? Well, um, the only advice that I can give is, I was very fortunate to have it at both ways. But you know, we are living in a society that like, not everyone has it like both ways. So I would say that I was blessed to have it in in this way so if someone is also blessed to have it like the way that i have i can boldly tell the person that it can in both ways you can do both at the same time and then to those who don't have it the same way as i had it if it is football then you need to like dedicate all your life and then like put 100 percent effort and then i think that at the end of the day it's really going to pay at the end of the day if you put 100 and then your maximum effort. Well, uh, uh, it's too early in your career, but let me ask you, uh, what do you intend to do uh, after after football? Because perhaps you have about 15 to 20 years to play. After that, what do you intend to do? Because uh, we see a lot of uh, 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 footballers, they finish the game and that, that that is the end. What do you intend to do with your life? And is it, is it a plan or you just waiting for for uh, your career to end before you start thinking about something? Well, um, actually, like I should say that, um, like I always say, and then I always give thanks to God because um, I think that my life journey have been like blessings upon blessings and then upon blessings. Because in as much as I am in Europe and then everything, I have a very good set of people that I keep around me and then these people always keep me on my toes like they are really very helpful and then 
they always tell me about a whole lot of stuff. Like, I have, like, Rabiu Mohammed. He's, like, a very powerful, like, person. And then, like, this Mr. Abdul Mumi Mama. I can't mention names because there are a whole lot of people who have really helped me a lot. And then even when I came into Liberty Professionals, like, there was this woman who was then our secretary there. She she has also been very helpful. Pamela and Sasa she has also been very helpful. And then they have been helping me and then, like, giving me advices on how to do. So I am a, I am on a couple of things that I'm do, doing that I can say that then um, in as much as education has no end, even at the end of football, I still know that I have like a chance to pursue education. And then I still make a little bit of investment that at the end of my career, I think that I will be okay. Okay, so if you just tune in, you're still watching uh, the Sports Coffee Show here on Omi Television. We are interviewing um, Emmanuel Enchi all the way from Czech Republic. He plays for Slavia Praha. Um, he is a midfielder there. Now, back to you, Emmanuel Enchi. How was the move ignited? How, how, how did you get a move to Slavia Praha in mid, uh, Czech Republic? Well, um, when I went to the national team, um, we, we, we were usually training at the uh, Tema Sports Stadium. So, um, and then that is where, like, usually when they have their agent games, you know, when agents come from Europe, that is where, like, they normally meet and then play games with other clubs. So, uh, we were having training one time, and then these agents came. So, uh, Mr. Anso, that is the owner of Liberty Professionals, had to call from their national team come that, oh, they wanted us to play like an agent game, you know? So, but that then we were in the national team, so they couldn't allow me to come to play an agent game. So the game was supposed to happen on Saturday. And then on Saturday morning, we were supposed to have training in their Tema Sports Stadium. So during the time that we were having that training, like the teams arrived, the team that were going to play the games arrived, and then um, the agents too were also there, you know? So it was during our training session, the national team, that like one agent saw me, and then he he was speaking with um, the other people there, and then they were saying that oh, he's a very good player. So that time also, uh, Mr. Anson was there, so he said he was my player, and then they said, if we get him, he's really going to be very good. So. That was when that uh, Mr. Anso had to contact um, their, um, the coach of the national team, that is Mr. Salastete. So he allowed me and then a couple of players to come and then play. So they gave us like um, two days break. So we had to like come and then play this game. So when we played this game, all these clubs there, like actually, like all these agents there actually were very interested in me. So. All of them were like speaking, we want him, we want him, we want him. So I think that the best offer at the end of the day won. So mm. that is what made me come to the Czech Republic. Okay, so as, as a young Ghanaian who had just moved from Ghana to Czech Republic, how did you settle there, adjusting to the environment and all that? Well, um, since I had, had I, I had already had an experience okay. in Europe because my first time I went to Europe was in Germany, mm. so I was having a little bit of, I've, I've like actually, ad adapted myself with the weather stuff and then everything. And then when I came, it was uh, in winter, and then the winter here in Czech Republic is kind of a little bit crazy, so mm. it was a little bit cold, but all the time it's just what what actually helped me most was um, I wasn't the going out type. It was just from home to training, training back home. So it was like just a one-way situation for the time. So, And then when I came, one thing that I know about European football like is when you really know how to play football and then you meet like the European people, it is very easy for them to love you, you know, because when they play alongside with you, they feel very comfortable. Like they know that, oh, this person is a talent. This person is someone that we can really work with. So it is very, very easy for you when you like have the talent and then very easy for you when you are very intelligent also. So, and then I wasn't speaking much. I was just doing what I was supposed to do on the field of play. And then that really helped me a lot. 
Great, great, great. So I'm asking so you two questions at the same so time. Comparing the Czech Republic League to that to that of our, our league here in Ghana, as well as your experience with the national team. Well, um, I should say that I should give a big thumbs up to um, the national team because um, Coisa Lasteta really helped me a lot. Because when I when I was in the national team, I am one kind of a player who really have very good work rate. So um, I was playing as a left winger and then sometimes as a right winger. So one time we were having training and then, um, no, it was actually a game. So we were playing in the national, we were playing like two sides. So in the first game, um, that time, Patrick Asma was the one playing as left defender, as okay. left back. So, and then that time Asma was injured. So we were going to have a game and then Kuisa Lasteta said, who should I even put there? And then he said, okay, I'm to go to play as left back. Mm. And then after the game, he said, no, now I want you to play left back. Because Which year was that? It was so good. Because it was in 2016. Okay. Yeah, 2016. Okay. Okay. So, like, it was, it was really great. And then I really enjoyed, like, playing the left back also because uh, it really gave me the chance to, like, work extra harder because going up and down and then everything so and then during these like experiences that i had in the national team uh when you when you compare it to the czech republic the czech republic football is like it is very competitive and then very very hard because if you can't run if you are not strong if you don't have a good work rate like you can't play in the czech league it is really really difficult so Having all these staffs like actually helped me a lot because of my work rate and then everything. So when I came, like I will, um, they gave me the role like to play like Koja Samoa. Like I just play on the line, and then no one is like actually in front of me. I just go up and down, and then it has been really very helpful. So okay. comparing the Czech league to um, the, uh, the Ghana league, Premier League, no, it you didn't think just so three much, matches, but I'm sure you might have had some experience. It isn't so much. It isn't so much different. The reason why that I'm saying that it isn't so much different is that, like, when you look at Europe, like, and then I compare it to Ghana, I can see that Ghanaian, we have a lot of talent because um, there are a whole lot of good players in Ghana, but it's just that they haven't gotten the chance to be in Europe. Mm -hmm. fact is, um, just that um, in, in Czech Republic, we are a little bit technical when it comes to in the Ghanaian league much more not more technical but much more raw just like some few teams which have like the technicalities but basically in europe like it is or in czech republic the technicalities are so much so that is the little bit different that i would say about uh yeah their it, yeah, Ima, and then the uh, i believe that the uh, every Ghanaian player player's dream is to play for the blasters uh, are you are you are you ready uh, if you called, I, I do you think that you can you can have a place in a blaster team? Yeah, um, when it comes to the national team, I I am one kind of a person that I don't have, I can't do it in my dictionary. Because if you never try, you can't say that you can do it. And then I am one person who is also like always positive minded, like my. I have I have made a hashtag for myself that is tough mind still. Like all the time I am like one hundred percent ready for whatever thing that comes my way. So I am anytime that I'm giving up the opportunity, I just do what I know best and then what I love to do best. So Well uh, uh, let me also ask you, um do you have any uh, uh, immediate uh, aspiration to, to move to another club and then which which club are you envisaging to, to move to? Yeah, like um, right now, um, I, 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 am, I moved from Slavia Prague to um, another first league team, which is um, 1FK Pibram. That is my, where I'm playing currently right now. I moved from Slavia Prague like last year, and then I'm currently playing for... Um, 1FK Pibram now. It is also in the top flight league here. So now I uh, I wouldn't say that this is my favorite club. I don't know why. With me, that is my idea. I don't know why some players have favorite clubs. 
But what I know for sure is that you can make a club a favorite based on like your personal idea. But what I know is that what are going to be or what is going to be my contribution to the club that I'm going. It doesn't matter how big the club is or how small the club is. Your contribution can make the club big and then can make it very um, beautiful for other other people to want to enjoy like or to want to join the club also. So with me, I do not have any favorite club. The only thing that I'm interested in, because I'm a football player, it's like um, I am working. So any place that I am called up to work, I just need to go there and then deliver what I, I was signed or what my contrast to play. So I don't have just a favorite club. Just I'm just someone who is ready to work. I, I, I thought you have it as much as you are a player and you want to play anywhere you sent. I, I thought you have a, a target, not not just a favorite. You don't need to have a favorite club, but a target as to one of the big teams that you can move to to propel. I may move your career forward. With me, with me, like I should say, uh, my target is to play football and then enjoy and then make a difference in wherever that I go. That is my target. So like maybe going to play in England or going to play in Spain or going to play in Croatia, going to play in America or something, like it doesn't really like matters to me. Like the only thing that really matters to me is the difference that I can make in that place that I go. So it doesn't matter the country like with me, I, I, every country is my favorite. Like I should put it that way. Okay. If I should put it in the very simplest mm, way, mm. every country is my favorite. Ima, Ima, I, I must admit you are very intelligent, and we, we are, we are happy to have players of, of your caliber. We are hoping that indeed you make us proud. We are monitoring your progress as well. Omi TV is in Ghana. We are monitoring whatever you think is appropriate. Let us know. We will also follow up and make sure that you are projected to the world. Keep being who you are. We will pray for you and make sure that you succeed. Finally, finally, um, how is the Czech League like and what are the preparations towards, uh, I mean, during this COVID-19 and when is the resumption of the league at Czech Republic or in Czech Republic? Well, um during this um, pandemic, we like we started playing the um, the league, and then I think we played like two games, and then we had to put a stop. So we stopped for like two two months, and then we started training. So yesterday they had a meeting as to whether we are supposed to continue the league or not. So this morning they finally um, brought a verdict out that we are going to continue the league. So we are supposed to start at the end of um, this month. Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll keep an eye yeah. on you and then make sure that everything is, on, is in order for you. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe. Keep, uh, make sure you, you observe the needed protocols from the World Health Organization, yeah? Okay, okay thank you so much. And we just hope Liverpool beats Manchester. For you for being on your show. In the game you are playing. <laughs>